Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be telling you about the Morty Classical Library of India, which is a partnership with Harvard University Press. And it's part of a, uh, a collection of classical libraries that have come out of Harvard over the decades. And so I'm going to be putting it in context. Oxford as well. This is going back quite a bit, but um, I'm going to be explaining both the paperback version and also the hardback. And uh, you may recognize the name Morty. Uh, this is the founder of the project. He's the son of Narayana Morty, who's known as the Bill Gates of India, one of the founders of Infosys, which was the first. He's an Indian billionaire businessman. He's um, Infosys was the first Indian IT company to be listed on the NASDAQ. And then this is Rohan's sister, who you might recognize as the first lady of uh, the UK. She's the wife of Rishi Sunak. And I'll put a link to it down below, but I actually did the most in-depth video out there um, going into Rishi Sunak's education, his PPE degree at Oxford and all that. So when I saw the name Morty, I knew that name ringed a bell. And then it turned out there's a whole interesting story behind it. Um, and then there's also Narayana's wife, Suda, and she's also got an interesting background. <clears throat> Member of public health care initiatives of the Gates Foundation, Bill and Melinda Gates. Um, known for philanthropy. So, and I talked about her a little bit more in the Rishi Sunak video. To take this back a little bit further in history, you need to know about this, the Clay Sanskrit Library. And this Sanskrit Library is important because this was the forerunner. Basically, they were putting out Sanskrit uh, classics through this Clay Sanskrit Library, named after John Peter Clay, who basically studied Sanskrit, amongst other things, at Oxford, uh, then went into investment banking, and then shoveled that money into this uh, Clay Sanskrit Library. So just to give you a sense of what that looks like, this is what this Clay Sanskrit Library looks like. And it's published by New York University Press, NYU. So that's what they look like. Um, that's the logo. So this wrapped up in 2008. They couldn't get money, or they were looking for money to continue it. And then around that time, uh, 
Rohan was at Harvard getting his PhD in computer science. He got his uh, undergrad at Cornell. He was also a fellow at MIT and a junior fellow at Harvard Society of Fellows. Um, so he was doing networked systems, embedded computing, distributed computing systems, wrote his uh, dissertation on opportunistic dynamic spectrum access and wireless networks, which um, is kind of relevant to the development of India because India kind of leapfrogged over the way the US had all these wired internet connections and laying down fiber and stuff. Um, they leapfrogged that and went straight to wireless. And so that area is particularly um, important in Indian infrastructure. Uh, he also, I forgot to mention, he also had that Microsoft Research Fellowship. So a lot of interesting stuff there. Um, but he got into Sanskrit while he was at Harvard. And uh, that's when he got interested in pursuing this project. And there's another important person in this mix. So that person is Sheldon Pollock. And he's a professor at Columbia, educated at Harvard, undergrad in Greek classics, mata cum laude, uh, and then a master's, and then a PhD in Sanskrit and Indian studies. So he is the editor, he was the general editor of the Clay Sanskrit Library and the founding editor of the Murdy Classical uh, Library of India. So he's a key person. That's him maybe 10 or 20 years ago. He's got a white beard now, but um, kind of reminds me of Steve Jobs actually. Um, and there are some interesting things about his uh, reception. He's sort of a critical philo philologist and um, there's been efforts to get him removed, which you can read about. Um, and uh, Rohan Morty decided to keep him on, but um, there's some interesting stuff there if you want to uh, delve into that a little bit deeper. But yeah, uh, this book is just one specific example. Uh, if I had to compare it to one thing, I would actually compare it to the Dup Dumperton Oaks Medieval Library. Uh, very similar in size. Uh, also Harvard associated. Um, I'm also going to be doing something later on Islamic. Th there's a new Islamic uh, series I'm going to be doing a video on, which has this kind of more ornate detailing on the spine, which is kind of interesting. Um, so that'll be coming later in the series. That's also NYU. So, um, you see the, uh, clay library there. And, um, so there's kind of a move, th there is a, uh, a little bit of a rivalry between New York and Boston, um, Columbia, especially in Harvard. So who knows if there's what, what exactly is going on there, but, um, so yeah, this specific, uh, one thing to pay attention to is this right here. Um,
there's a couple different names for that a ribbon or a bookmark or a bookmark ribbon um, in the Dumberton Oaks series for example there's different colors depending on um, the language that's being translated uh, between so um, that's a design feature you'll sometimes see and so we can uh, these kind of books you've noticed there's a lot of kind of solid colors and maybe a little bit of detailing um, part of the point of that is when you see them on the bookshelf they're easy to recognize by color and you see just a wall of all the same color so um, there's two ways to kind of display them with this dust jacket and without so I'll take the dust jacket off and there's also the design feature of this inner piece of paper on on a nicer book this first sheet of paper is going to be um, a different material so you can see it's kind of a recycled uh, slightly darker tint than the regular paper inside. And you can see that here also. It's kind of a gentle speckling um, of, of recycled material. There's the Harvard University Press information. So um, we'll take the dust jacket off and you can see the cloth um, underneath the gilded text So this book specifically, it's called The Essence of Politics, but it's really more of a um, book about statecraft. Uh, in some ways, it's advice to a king and ad advice to a prince, advice to a certain extent also for the retinue or the advisors around the prince or king. So uh, if you're interested in strategic culture or you're interested in just, um, you know, you may have read medieval takes on this or you might have read Sun Tzu, um, the prince Machiavelli, there's a long tradition of these kind of books in uh, in pretty much all civilizations. And um, some of my more advanced courses get into that. Um, so you can contact support at timothykenny.com if you're interested in some of that stuff, learning more about that types of strategy. Um, I was researching this. There's like, there's a monograph out of the I think it's called the Indian Ministry of Defense on this book, uh, on the, not this specific volume, but, but this classical book on kind of Indian strategic thought. It's like 135, six pages. There's a PDF you can find online on that. Um, Army strengths and weaknesses. So the idea of the king being the commander in chief is key here and a military leader. And so you have the Sanskrit on one side and English on the other. And we can compare that. Although, you know, just to um, reframe things a little bit, there's a little bit of a note of the text and translation at the beginning. Um, there's the introduction and there's notes at the end. 
there's a table of contents. So let me just take you first through the first few pages. Um, this acronym right here is key, MIRTI, Classical Library of India, Volume 28. So you, if you want to put them in proper order as they were published, you can do that. There's Sheldon Pollock, general editor. And uh, just as a comparison again, Dumberton Oaks, they are a little bit more forward with the Veritas Harvard crest there. Um, same design of the uh, ribbon there. Similar cloth look, although a little bit different. Um, sort of a purple burgundy. And then you have this inner uh, paper. That's what I was talking about before. And then you see it says Domal, Dumberton Oaks Medieval Library, volume 78. So uh, a lot of similarities and parallels. There's the table of contents. I won't go through the whole thing. I'm gonna do a separate video on this. But um, getting back here, Got the title page, Cambridge, Massachusetts, London, England, 2021. And the chapters, for whatever reason, are untitled. Um, you wouldn't necessarily say this is the most politically correct uh, book, and so maybe that's why they didn't put those in there, who knows. Um, but yeah, it does remind me somewhat of The Prince, um, other books like that. Um, although at the beginning, there is more of that Sun Tzu kind of feel where the first chapter is conquering the senses, so very much about mindset and inner experience, kind of a spiritual level to it, um, associating with wise men, branches of knowledge. So there, there's kind of a philosophical start to it. Um, demarcating good contact, conduct. Guarding Princes, Chapter 7. So yeah, uh, a little bit more about the story behind this. Um, and while I do that, I'll just show you the visual again. You have the Sanskrit on one side, and basically as you read through this, you have the each sentence um, or sort of series is, is numbered here. And so you go back and forth um, with that. In the Clay Sanskrit Library, the Sanskrit is rendered in this Romanized. Uh, it's not in the original Sanskrit script. So that's a really important difference. And then you have the paperbacks. Which are just English. There's not the original Sanskrit. 
and so again i'll be showing you more about this this is the uh the Arabic library uh, stuff that I'll be talking more about later. But in the paperback version, they also only do English. There isn't, it's not side by side in parallel Arabic and then English. So across all of these different libraries, that's generally how they do things. And, um, and so that's, another thing to just be aware of not to show you too many examples but this is the harvard classics um aesop's fables so just another piece although i don't really want to spend too much time on it because it's not part of this what i really want to focus on with this uh series is these uh classic books where you have the parallel translation that's what to me is really interesting so you have the latin here and then the english and just i'm going to be doing a video on at least one on mark zuckerberg at some point um how he's obsessed with caesar and uh the classics and the private school he went to he spent a lot of time studying this kind of stuff so it wouldn't be it wouldn't surprise me at all if Mark Zuckerberg actually read this. And so one tech empire builder um you know just having an interest in this stuff uh the the meme lately of how you know how often do you think about the Roman uh the Roman empire kind of thing um this one as well, which we'll get into in a separate video. They're all color coded. And uh, so there's more coming out in this series. They're aiming to do over 500 of them. And uh, part of what's cool about reading these is if you, if you've already learned some Sanskrit and you want to uh, kind of relearn it or get back into it, these parallel translations can be really great for that. Um, I studied four years of Latin in high school, and so um, going through this kind of stuff, it I was surprised it wasn't too difficult. And uh, you have to work, you know, look stuff up here and there, but it's not too bad. So. It can be an interesting experience going back and um, just giving it a try. And with ChatGPT especially, I'm going to do a video on that as well. Um, you can use that to uh, help you through tough spots. And it takes much less time to look things up now with ChatGPT and you know using your camera phone to scan things in and just say, hey, translate this, or hey, what does this mean? Um, it's really changed the game in that respect. So, uh, oh yeah, so the other thing I wanted to mention is the funding of this thing. So this project was started with a $5.2 million donation. Um, or endowment to get this thing set up and that's roughly that five million dollar mark um that's roughly that's roughly what a an endowed chair a um endowed professorship that's how much that would cost at a school like harvard um, or another ivy league so um this is a little bit more speculative, but just in terms of pricing these things out, um, I would expect a translation like this to cost uh, maybe $10,000, $25,000 to get the translation done, maybe double that to get everything else done. 
Um, so about 50,000 for this, could, but it could easily be half that. And the way these endowments uh, work, I mean, they work in different ways, but um, say a professorship is endowed $5 million. The idea is you're going to get fairly conservatively 5% uh, returns on your money. And so you have a you have the Harvard management company that manages all the money for Harvard. Uh, that's their job. That's, that's why those guys can get five, $10 million a year, mostly in bonuses at the highest level if they're doing really well, because they're just growing that money. And, um, and so if they can get that 5%, you can keep the initial $5 million principal intact hopefully never have to draw down on it. And that is going to return a quarter million dollars a year. So five, think 10% of 5 million is 500,000. So 5% is half of that or 250,000. So 250,000 can easily support a professor who might be getting, you know, hundred, maybe 150, maybe 200, um, and maybe supplemented from other sources as well. Um, but that could easily pay for, uh, you know, a quarter million could maybe pay for five to 10 of these to be produced per year in perpetuity. Um, so their goal is 500. So maybe they're planning for this to last 50, 100 years. Um, so that's just kind of a picture of the economics of how a project like this might work. And, uh, Funding is a really important part of these kind of projects uh, to get them off the ground and to keep them going. And then we all get to enjoy the fruits of that. So um, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I do coaching and consulting. If you're looking to take this on as a learning project, if you're looking to put together a project like this, um, if you want help with your accelerated learning productivity, those are the courses I teach. If you want to know more about my premium stuff, which is not out on other platforms, it's exclusively through my website and there's certain enrollment dates, um, you can email me at support at timothykenny.com and I or somebody else will get back to you and um, walk you through things. Definitely like and subscribe if you want to get more content like this. And in the description down below will be a playlist where I'm going to be covering basically every book in existence that's like this. That's a, you know, where it's, you know, a five foot library or the idea of filling up an entire bookshelf with a single color. You know, if you see a bunch of books like that um all of the same color you know that they're uh from the, a, a similar series or if you here's the um arabic series i'll be uh covering as well library of arabic literature So, um, and, and in general, not many people talk about it, but, um, you know, if you're just reading books that are kind of one-offs, you might think about like, what if I became the kind of person that read through a series of books? Um, there's, uh, the famous computer science, I'm blanking on the exact term for it, but the, uh, computer science series, uh, by Springer. Um, lectures in computer science, I believe. Um, but there's these series of books and uh, there's a certain satisfaction you get going through a bunch of these or having, you know, a bunch of these on your bookshelf and then being able to go and kind of somebody's curated all that stuff for you. And you see there's that visual format of the kind of maze if anybody knows what that's called, definitely leave a comment. I know there's a term for that. And then you have the logo there. So when you compare the uh, 
clay sanskrit library there's a very similar uh aesthetic And so that's part of what I want to do with this series is uh, kind of make that aesthetic more um, more easy to see. So you can see these two books are very similarly sized. They're basically duplicates. And then the Dumberton Oaks and the uh, Murdy classical library of india are also nearly identical there's also a um well actually i'll save that for another video but just doing that upside down you can see these are also literally almost indistinguishable so i'll leave it there definitely let me know what you think down below if you have any questions or comments or other things you want me to review uh leave that down below and uh make sure to like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video